Hi guys! Rigging's the name of the game. There are several types of rigging possible for um, the ships. Uh, many debate if the uh, materials we're using are not out of scale anyway. To me that doesn't really matter because in my opinion the model should be looking good and that is the most important thing. If you're modeling for a museum then you probably switch to 1 to 100th scale or 1 to 50th scale anyway and then you find appropriate rigging material. I really do not care if the rigging material is a bit out of scale. Um, anyway, several materials do offer themselves. Um, I'm in the happy position to own not one, but two spools of Lycra thread. This elastic material, I don't know if this will ever show on the video, this elastic material um, thickness is uh, 40 deniers. Um, I think the definition for that is that one kilometer of yarn weighs 40 grams, something like that. Well, it's super thin and it's elastic, so this wouldn't break. The only setback is that it's white and it needs to be painted with a permanent marker, if possible, before uh, attaching it to the model. Um, okay, this supply will last me for at least three or four lifetimes, so I don't really care if I waste a little bit of that. Um, on the other hand, there is pretty famous, not really easy to come by. Uh, it's, well, where is it? It's hiding, hiding. It's Sinis Black Thread. It's 20 denier, meaning one kilometer weighs 20 grams, so it's even half the thickness of the elastic material. But this one is rigid. This is used to tie fly fishing lures. I don't know if this will focus at all. This is the type of invisible modeling we are facing right now. Because the material is hardly showing at all. If you take a photograph of the model, of course, it will be looking really, really cool. And now, well, this is the, 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 the thing with uh, the um, Sinus thread is that is really stable. I mean, you can pull quite a bit before it breaks, but uh, it's not elastic. And uh, if you use that, um, of course, if somebody touches it, it will break or it will break off parts of your model. It's um, uh, heat responsive, so you can um, tighten the thread by applying heat. Uh, the heat will apply it by blowing joss sticks. Yeah, these are very helpful. You should have them for rigging anyway. And the high art of rigging. Whoops, sorry. Take the dive. Oops, there you go. The high art of rigging is stretching sprue. You see, there's different colors of sprue, and uh, you can have different colors uh, of your stretch sprue as well. This is really, really the high art because with this you can make a thread so thin, yeah, you can hardly even see it. But on a photograph it will show and it will most certainly be in scale. These are, I don't know, probably a tenth of a hair if you do it properly. But this is really, really incredibly difficult to do. There are masters on this planet, like uh, Jim Bowman, for example, who takes 40, 50, 60 hours of rigging his vessels in 700 scale. So um, I will be using this just to show you how it goes, but this is not my preferred medium, even though this is the one which is most in scale. Okay. Um, tools you need. You need tools. Of course, you need super glue. Liquid type, gel type. You need a heat source, a lighter, and of course the joss sticks. 
Um, bop, 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 bop. Of course, you need a knife. Who wonders? If you have, you should have a small but very sharp pair of scissors. You should have needle pliers, straight ones, and curved ones to apply some um, tension to um, to the rigging. A cross plier can be helpful, but it's rarely used. At least I rarely use it. Okay, this is the material you need. And now we'll jump right into the action. Uh, before doing that, there's one thing you have to consider when rigging your ship. You're cluttering your uh, ship with highly fragile material now. So you need to consider in which pl which places you need to reach after the rigging. For example, by uh, placing figures or things like that. If done well, it shouldn't be a problem. And if you think about where you place your figures and everything, it's not going to be a problem. But uh, you probably do a mix of um, placing the figures and putting on the the the, um, the rigging uh, because in one case uh, placing the figures can hurt the rigging or the figures could be in your way if you uh, place them before the rigging you just have to consider what you do and then there is the general rule you do the rigging from the inside to the outside and from the bottom up so you don't have to cross have to cross the work you've done already you will have to do that in a couple of places anyway but uh, this is the rule of the thumb that you should follow yeah and uh, I really really highly recommend it to follow it yeah because you can destroy your work so easily all right so next step rigging in action see you in a bit okay here's the lycra thread I hope you can see it. I can see it on the screen and uh, hopefully you can see it too. Just uh, moving it a little bit, quite hopefully. Can you see the thread? This is the Lycra yarn. <coughs> Basically, what I'm doing is having my permanent marker ready and uh, I'm just taking this into my mouth and run the uh, fiber along. I don't know. Can you see the effect? Now in white. No, it doesn't show at all because the fiber, <laughs> because this fiber escaped. You see, this is incredibly fiddly work, and you know this is like working with uh, this is like working with spider webs. You see how it's colored. It's rolling up a little bit due to the application of the solvent in there, but uh, that doesn't hurt the thread so much. And uh, usually you just take sh uh, s just short lengths to um, and paint them. You see, even with breathing, the breathing this just flies away. Just taking the scissors, cutting it. The first thing I do is take some gel type glue and just take the very tip of the thread and dip it into the dip it into the super glue just just a little bit. So I get a workable just a workable end. Now I need to 
find a suitable spot to apply that piece of yarn. Okay, now that you've seen a few moves, I will be continuing to rig. As soon as I will be using new material, I will let you know. As you can see, I've been making some progress. I hope that the white background will help you to make out the rigging yarn along the foremast. <clears throat> Now this is made all with um, elastic rigging yarn and now I will be switching to the fly fishing thread because now I need to construct horizontal rigging um, to, which the, um, to which more vertical rigging will have to be attached and uh, so for, um, to improve stability I switch to the non-flexible and very rigid um, Senis yarn and that will go someplace wait a second let me move that um, I hope you can make this out there's whoops there's a yard I'm right here and there's a yard arm there and there's gonna be horizontal connections as well they're gonna be horizontal connections from the yard arm to the main mast and all around the top of the foremast um, here will you will see that later on other rigging will be uh, will have to be attached uh, so the stronger yarn now is a necessity um, there is not much difference in the use of the yarn of the seamless yarn. You take length, you attach some glue to one end, attach some glue to the other end. And that's basically all there is to it. If there is not enough tension to the uh, seamless thread, then uh, some uh, um, heat application will do to tighten it. Okay, I will be showing you some results uh, as soon as possible. Okay, you can see the rigging here on the yard arm and here in front. This is pretty soft and wavy and it doesn't look really nice uh, because it's uh, got its own inner uh, tension distorting the shape. 
Now I'm taking the incense stick, which is already burning, and I maneuver the heat under the yarn and surely but slowly the yarn straightens out and um, I gotta just be careful to not apply too much heat otherwise the yard arms will be pulled into unwanted directions. Very nice. Now all the rigging is very nice and straight and it's got enough uh, tension to attach more rigging directly to it. That'll be the next step and for that I will be using even thinner stainless thread. I don't know if there's some dangling in the picture now, if that shows at all. Well, in the end, photographed against the white background, you will be able to see it and it's very, very convincing. All right, here's the try to make the um, flag halyards. I certainly hope you can see these here quite soft. These are attached to the horizontal rigging up here. And um, these need to be tightened by heat application. That will be done with the joss stick again. But uh, I will have to lift up the model to um, avoid the heat to um, be applied in places I don't like it. So um, this will be probably not showing on any video, uh, but I'll try to give you um, some uh, close-up shots of that area uh, with the camera and uh, high magnification that will hopefully serve the purpose. Let's try to zoom in some. At one point, yeah, the camera will not focus any closer than that. But I think you can see what's going on. And uh, yeah, let's hope that that'll work out as planned. But this is a first for me as well. I have not ever attached any uh, vertical rigging to horizontal rigging. Um, so this is a trial and error for me too. Hope it works out. See you.